Now there are four methods for measuring the trend. Free end method, semi-average method, moving average method and method of least square. Now first we will talk about free end method. In this method, the given data are plotted on a graph paper and the trend line is fitted to the data just by inspecting the graph of the series. A smooth free end curve is drawn through the scatter of the plotted points which appear to represent their patterns of movement over time. As a rough guide, the line should be so drawn by the statistician that it passes between the plotted points in such a manner that the fluctuations in one direction are approximately equal to those in the other direction. Now advantages and disadvantages of freehand method. Now advantage. A quick estimation of the trend is obtained and that the method can be used to obtain a preliminary knowledge of the nature of the trend. This is the simplest method of measuring trend. Now disadvantage, it depends on individual judgment and different persons will obtain different trend values from the same data. Now need an experienced statistician to draw the time series. Now the example of freehand method. Fit a trend line to the following data by the freehand method. Now we have a data, okay. So we have a 11 data. Now 11 from uh, year from 2000 to 2010, a number of students say 30, 28, 40 and so on. Now this is the R implementation. So here input year, student and we plot the, uh, we plot the scatter plot. Now these are the data and from the data, we just draw the line okay, by freehand methods. Okay, now in the next example, semi-average method. Now semi-average method divides the data into two parts and then finds an average for each part. For example, we are given data from year 2005 to 2010, 2005 to 2010. Okay, so even number of years, the two equal parts are 2005 to 2007, 2005 to 2007 and 2008 to 2010. Now in case of odd number of years, we ignore the middle layer. That is, suppose we are given data from 2005 to 2011, then the total equal parts are 2005 to 2007. That is 2005 to 2007 and 2009 to 2011. 2009 to 2011. The middle year 2008 will be ignored. The middle year 2008 will be ignored. These averages are plotted as points on a graph paper against the midpoint of the time interval covered by each part. The straight line joining these two points gives the trend line. Now we can see one example. Now the profit of an item varied from January 2016 to November 2016 as in the table. Fit a trend line by the method of semi-average. Now solutions. So it is January to December. So 11 months are there. That is odd number of months or number of data. So we plot, we just calculate data from January to May and July to December. And we, we have to ignore the, the middle point. Now average of the first half, that is 10, 8, 14, 18, 15, that is up to that, this data, we have to take the average, okay, and the answer is 13, so January to May, and average of the second half, that is 19, 23, that means this particular part, and the answer is 20.4, so July to November, so July to November, and ignoring the data of June 2016. So we have to ignore this particular part by joining the two data. So if you draw this two, if you join these two data, okay, we get a trend line which describes the given data. So we can see that graph. Now here, months and profit. These are the input. Okay. And these are the, this is the plot and the, these are the middle points. Okay. These are the middle points. That means the values are 13 and 20.4. 13 and 20.4. So this is what? 13 and 20.4. And just draw the line using these two points. Okay. So we just draw the line in using these two points. 
So this is the example of semi-average method. Now advantages and disadvantages of semi-average method. Now advantages. This method is simple to understand. If the actual trend is a straight line, the method will give satisfactory result. And disadvantage, this method assumes straight line relationship between the plotted points. It is sensitive to outliers. Next, we'll talk about moving average method. The moving average method is defined as a series of arithmetic means of two or more successive observations. These moving averages are used as trend values. Now, advantages of moving average method. The method is very simple and needs no complicated mathematical calculations. It, it can adapt themselves to changes, changing circumstances. Now, disadvantage of moving average method. This method cannot be used for forecasting future trend because it assumes no law of changes. Now, this is an example of moving average method. Now, calculate three early moving average method. Okay, so three early moving average method or following data. So, we are from 1994 to 2013 and the values are 12, 10, 18 and so on. Now, we calculate three early moving average method as follows. We just for the first moving average data at the year 1995 is 12, 10, 18. So we have to just take the average of these three data. Okay. So we have to take average of these three data. 12, 10, 18. 12, 10, 18. And the value is what? 13.33. So we have to put here that average value here in 1999, in 1995 year block. And we have to leave this particular data part. And the second moving average data is what? The second part. That means this particular, we have to take the average of this data. So 10, 18, 14. 10, 18, 14 divided by 3, that is 14. So we have to put 14 here. Similarly, for the next average data, we have to calculate average of this data. And the answer is what? 16 is the answer. So we have to put here. Similarly, the next moving average data is what we have to take average of these two three, these three data and the answer is what 733 okay now if you put all the values down we can see these are our original data okay and this is the trend and these are the moving average graph okay so these are the R implementation through which we can implement it now next we'll talk about weighted Moving average method. Find the trend of the following series using three yearly weighted moving average method with weights 1 to 1. In the previous example, here we haven't considered the weights. Okay, so it is, we assume that all are equal weights data. Now here we vary the weights. Now first data will be first weight, first data weight will be 1, second data weight will be 2, and third data the, the weight of the third data will be 1. That means we are giving uh, maximum weight to the middle values. Okay, now we calculate three yearly moving average method as follows. For the first moving average data at the year 2001 is 9 into 1. Okay, so 9 into 1 plus 5 into 2 plus 6 into 1. Okay, and the weights are addition of all the weights 1 to 1, the answer is 6.25. And we put the, the value 6.25. Similarly, we can the second data. So 5 into, so for this, these three data, 5 into 1 plus 6 into 2 plus 15 into 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1, that will be 4. And the answer will be what? It is 8. So and so on. And then we have to plot this data. This is the trend. So, so these are the original data. Okay, and this is the moving average data, and this is nothing but the trend. Now, fitting mathematical curve. So it is called it is also called method of least square. In fitting mathematical curve, an appropriate type of mathematical equation is selected for trend. Evaluate the trend equation on the basis of the given time series data. The scatter diagram of the original time series data guides the choice of appropriate type of equation for trend. 
In the scatter diagram shows approximately straight line, parabola or higher order polynomial, exponential curve, logistic curve respectively. We use the various equations based on the situations. So if it is a straight line, we use this particular equation. So if it is parabola or higher order polygon, we use this type of equation. If it is exponential curve, we use this type of equation. If it is a logistic curve, we use this type of equations. The constants B0, B1, B2 values are obtained by applying the principle, principle of Litz square. Now, fitting mathematical curve or method of Litz square. Now, shows production of a biscuit factory here in between 2008 to 2016. So the production in tons, 70 ton, 65 ton. Apply method of least square to, find, to fit a straight line trend. Estimate the likely production of the company during 2017. Okay, so um, already we have discussed about all this method of least square in the regression video. Now table shows the calculations of the method of square. So this is the equation, sorry, this is the calculations. Okay and x bar is equal to mean value is 20 y value and the mean value of y is what 91.22 and x, x is nothing but x minus x bar and y is equal to y minus y bar now this is the straight line equation okay we can and if you rearrange the equation this is the final straight line equation and already we know how to get this one and as an example the first point of the straight line is so so the first point here we put the year 2008 okay but to put the year 2008 if you put the, the year we can get the answer 71.0 t similarly we calculate the other points now these are the these are the um, uh, these are the all implementations line through which you can implement and the point of the trend line so these are the years okay and these are the calculated values so we can get these particular values by by applying these equations by applying these particular equations and if you put all the x values we can get we can get this particular we can get all these values and if you draw lines based on these lines based, based on these values we can get the trend okay so these are the original data these are the original points and this is nothing but the trend we have we have got from the straight line equations. In the next video, we will talk about measurement of seasonal variations. Okay, and that is the end of this video. Thank you very much.